Hi, welcome to Funnet Power Videos. This is DC here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up PN5180 evaluation board. This video is going to be helpful for students, software developers, or system integrators who would like to know more about the working or functioning of this PN5180 chipset. Now, this is the board I'm going to speak about. And I also mentioned about this board in my earlier videos. So this board is a, a ready to use board. This also comes with a nice software for NXP. If you can see here, I made a little mark over here. So this is uh, labeled as S200. Now you just have to keep in mind these two contacts. You might end up using these two contacts so in the later part of the videos or during the setup of this board on your PC. So I would like to cover the following things in these videos. Firstly, you have to buy this uh, board and these board, you know, cost wise, they're not that expensive. So if you are a type of person who would like to learn more about this or who would like to get more knowledge about PN5180, buying a board like this is worth so you can connect this board using either micro or a mini usb cable so probably when you buy the board you might not get this cable you might find in a one or two at home or can buy one so this board comes with a, a nice software written by or created by nxp and you can get this software from the nxp website for free however you have to register before you download i have a copy of mine you need the user guide of this board which you can also get from the nxp website and these are a couple of things you know you have to do before you start using which i'm going to show you or explain in this video so i don't think i can show give a live demonstration of uh, these things because i have already done these um, upgrades on my board which you know the system does not let me do again but I'll give a theory behind this probably now with that information it will be you can also try on your own so you have to replace a couple of firmware you have to replace what is called as LPC firmware the LPC is a, this is the the processor which is running on the board so if you go back to the the previous video So here in this in this board, this chip is what the PN5180 NFC chip is. This is the chip connected to the antenna. And this is the, the microcontroller uh, with the LPC series. And if you if you come from the Arduino programming background, you can think this is this has your the Arduino microcontroller and and you're connecting this Arduino to PN5180 using the SPI. So here in this instead of Arduino you got a much probably you now much powerful processor here. So you can you can program this uh, processor as well. So finally I'm going to show you how to use a very basic usage of this uh, NFC cockpit. Because NFC cockpit is a very comprehensive software. You can you can spend in you know, a days and days learning that there are so many videos on internet and I will leave that part uh, of learning to you. So I'm going to show you how to use a simple MIFE ultralight or IS15693 tag. Now this is the software called NFC Cockpit. This is the latest version I got from uh, the NXV website. And you can see I've connected my uh, PN5080 evaluation board and this connects uh, using the mini USB cable. So everything has been configured. Now there's a working software. Now as you can see, there are so many things you can do here. So if you if you are a, if you are a person who want to design your antenna, or if you want to know how to set up uh, a very registers of this uh, PN5180 chip, you can you can play with all those things you know using the software so this is as I said this is a very very comprehensive software 
So you got something called secure update, which I'll be using here. And also, you know, there is something called if you go to extra, you can you can you know load the firmware. But what I noticed is most of the updates to your board will be done by this software automatically. So you will end up doing you know, a very little upgrades to your board. Say for example, secure upgrade. Now I'm just not, I'm not going to spend any more time on details of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to activate a Mifair a ultralight tag which is of uh, type A. I'm going to place it here, place uh, above the antenna. I'm going to turn the RF field on. I'm going to say activate layer 3. You can see that this recognize the UID of that. Probably you can also start sending various uh, commands say if you want to read. So you can send the read command here. Type in the hex command. So say for example, let me get a, a code for this. Now this is the data sheet of Mifair ultralight tag and there is a command to read uh, the pages. You know this read command reads four pages. I'm going to send this command 30 followed by the page number. So since I removed the tag, I have to reactivate, activate, and I'm going to send 30 space followed by. So I want to read from starting from the page 0 and send this. This is the response you got. You know, this is. If you, if you have seen my videos on Mifair Ultralight, the first four blocks consist of the UID as well. So this is the UID of the tag and you can see here, you are able to read, um, you are able to send the, the command for the tags directly using this feature. So as I mentioned before, you know, you can do so many things. If you look at the documentation of, uh, of this uh, board, there are examples on how to do read and write for a Mifair desktop as well. So, so it's, it's worth reading that user guide a couple of times. So likewise, I also got a IS415693 tag here. So to work on that, go to this tab. First, you know, you have to uh, load this protocol. I don't think I did here. So I think this was the default uh, protocol. So usually now, the sequence you follow is set the field on or first set the, the protocol, set the field on and send the command. Looks like the default uh, value of the protocol registers are of type A. So before you read IS15693, you have to set the protocol, load the protocol, get the inventory. You can see this is the UID of IS15693 tag. And after this, you know, just go through the documentation of IS15693 and start sending the commands and, you know, you can, you can start learning any tag using the software. So you can see here, you know, if you're, if you're a, a student, you know, you can also learn how this uh, screens are laid out. Okay, you can get some ideas on how to design a software, you know, something like this, the various tabs here. So it looks like, you know, the design is also uh, pretty interesting, you know, to learn as well. Now this is the product page on NXP website. This is where you get everything, all the documentation and you can see there are so many links here that shows you how to use this board and the software. So in order to get the documentation, you go here and the softwares are available from, from this tab. So you need this software and there are the download options in order to follow that. And this is the documentation I was, uh, I mentioned about this document shows you how to set this up, uh, set this board up. Okay, there is a section called the first time uh, setup. That's exactly what you'll, you'll end up doing. Now, this is what you know you have to follow. So, I'm just going to give a, a very brief, you know, theory, what you understood about these uh, words like a VCOM or a Eben thing, you know, I'm just going to give a brief idea now. Now this schematic shows you um, how this N uh, NFC cockpit earlier version uh, used to work. Now here this is the the board. Now inside the board we have seen it has got LPC microcontroller. It has got a PN5180 chip. 
and TN580 has got its own firmware and LPC microprocessor has got its own firmware. Compare this LPC with like a, something like a Arduino. You know, Arduino comes with its own firmware. You can also load your program into the Arduino. It's very similar to that. You can you can use you can create a program on a PC and upload it to run on a on LPC microcontroller. And the board comes with a default driver based on a bend. I'm not sure. I can't. I don't know anything more about this uh, this board. So keep in mind that just kind of a driver, which is uh, called in you know, a bend or based on a bend interface. Now, the earlier software, when you install this on a PC, it used to load the a bend driver on a PC. So both the drivers are compatible, and the NFC cockpit software is to is to communicate with the board. So whatever you do on this software will be translated to various uh, commands and sent to this sent to this uh, microcontroller, which will again talk to PIN 5180, which will talk to the card antenna. Everything the data goes back to your software. Now this is how the the earlier software used to work. And the most important thing to remember here is the driver that's running on the board is based on ABEN. Now, if you get the latest version of NFC cockpit software now, now this is how the software structure is. The NFC software install it, it automatically installs a driver called a VCOM driver. Now, the board still has got the ABEN driver. Now, obviously, these two are not compatible. So your software either it doesn't see the board or you cannot communicate with the board at all. So the, the next thing you know what you have to do is you have to replace this interface driver with VCOM so that you make both the interface compatible. So this is exactly what you're going to do in the first time uh, guide in the user guide. In the first time you know a setup in user guide. This needs replacing with the VCOM driver and there are two methods of doing that so i have followed a method you know which i'm going to mention uh, uh, in the next part it's uh, the version the method two now after replace uh, this driver with vcom nfc cockpit can communicate with the board what nfc cockpit does the first thing is it will try to upgrade the firmware of this uh, lpc microcontroller so this does you know kind of a automatically as soon as you run as soon as NFC cockpit finds this board it checks the firmware of this LPC microcontroller it uh, it shows a message for you saying that the firmware in the board is older than the firmware that's present in the software so it will automatically do the updates but this one the firmware for PN580 has to be done if you remember uh, on the NF NFC cockpit software I showed a button called secure update you can use that to you know update this firmware all the firmware files required for VCOM and uh, L LPC microcontroller and this they're all available as soon as you install this uh, software so you can install this NFC cockpit software even without the board connected to your PC and this is what you end up getting after installation. So this has got a folder called VCOM. This is where you know you find the VCOM drivers. This is this has got this is what the one you're going to use, replacing ABEN into VCOM. So if you open that, there is a file called LPC main.bin. This needs copying into the board. That's the first thing you have to do in order to make this uh, uh, in order to replace the ABEN driver on the board with the VCOM driver. After that, there is a firmware here. This is your uh, uh, the PN5180 firmware. You know, this firmware needs going into the PN5180 firmware, and there is somewhere you know here where it replaces the firmware of the LPC as well. So, from the from the developer's point of view, you now we don't have to uh, now go anything more in detail here. So most of the things are. Or either used uh, just once and after that you'll be focusing more on uh, learning um, the various registers and uh, uh, you know, various uh, configurations 
this is what now is we're going to say when you inst when you connect the board without having any nfc so nfc cockpit software so as usual windows 10 recognize this as a, a just a usb device and when you install the nfc cockpit software during the installation process it also asks you whether you would like to install the vcom driver on a pc click on install and after that you know when you go to this device manager right click on this device and say update update my um, driver for this thing you can update with the uh, you can let windows automatically search it will recognize you know this driver and eventually you you must say an entry like this now we have changed from a basic usb com port to a nxp nfc cockpit vcom driver so this is what you know you have to have uh, before your nfc cockpit software works so back into this uh, documentation there are two methods i, I somehow did not get this uh, the method one uh, working on my machine so i have to follow the method two so in the method two it makes your board visible as a, a mass storage device you know which is very similar to what happens when you connect a usb memory stick so in order to do that you just have to be very careful when you do this uh, with these steps on the board you will see these sw200 uh, labeled uh, connectors here there's a connector here and there you just have to short these two or close these two with a wire and you have to connect the board to the pc once you do that your pc will recognize a additional usb storage and it is available as a drive and this is what you see in your in your pc now this file is the old file you have to delete this file and copy the the lpc main file i showed you before in here and automatically now um, this should close this should close so once this is done remove the board reconnect it and run your nfc uh, cockpit software from that point on everything is automatic everything recognizes updates except you know you might have to uh, uh, do this secure update for for pn 5180 firmware which again when you hit this that secure update button you just have to go through that folder choose the file and upload it then everything will working for you you just have to spend time reading the data sheet of uh, pn5180 have few tags ready with you and you can just you know master pn5180 board or the chip okay so that's all i got in this video you know thanks for watching